Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and I think I need to adjust that a little bit. If I'm head too much toward the top of the screen, that just doesn't look right either. Uh, such a... Everything is annoying in the world. It's either it, it doesn't work right or it, or it works, but not right. Uh huh. Anyway, though, today is Thursday, 6.10 a.m. Of course, I can't even start early on time. I'm late starting early because <sighs> I have an 8 o'clock. Well, I have to leave at 8 o'clock for my 9 o'clock therapist appointment today in Olympia again. Son of a gun. So I got to start early, which means I meant to start 10 minutes ago. So yay. <laughs> it is the 21st of December. Three more days until Christmas. My wife loved Christmas. It was her favorite time of the year. So of course, we're racing headfirst into the favorite time of the year with her still dead. I mean, she's going to be dead forever. I mean, she's gone. She's dead. And one day that's going to be all of us. That's why there's, there's no point to any human endeavor. I mean, nothing we do makes a difference. Think of all the people just in the United States alone, for you in the United States citizens, that have passed on. How many millions or billions by this time. How many do you remember? Can you even remember that person that you knew as a kid who is uh, passed on now? Somebody from the neighborhood or some such like that? They're gone. Do you remember them? No, that's us. We're going to be gone and forgotten. Maximum. Well, minimum. Not maximum. You might be remembered for 20 years unless you're like one of the 1% that's still remembered. But even then, well, who cares if you're remembered? You're dead. And give it another hundred years past that? How about all those unnamed millions and billions throughout history? Everybody in Rome that thought that they were big name. Do we remember them? No. All the people in Egypt that were convinced they were gods. Do we remember them? Maybe a, an occasional pharaoh, but even at that, they're still gone. Give it another thousand years, two thousand years, they'll be forgotten. Another thousand, two thousand years, will there even be any anything left of human civilization? There is no point to any human activity. We're on the, the cusp of destruction, have been since forever. And if we do manage to wipe ourselves out, then, oh well. I mean, it'll be sad. Not that there'll be anyone around to feel sad about it, but it'll be abstractly sad that we're gone. I don't like to think of a future without the human race. I'd like to have humanity exist forever. But really, there's... A time limit on just about everything on, on life in the in this universe of ours comes up. One of the things about that, of course, is, and this is actually a, a point of of hope in the midst of all that. We may not have us in the future, but even though. Our universe works on entropy. Everything is falling apart, going to a lower rest level, a lower energy state. Everything is breaking down to a lower energy state. That's just the way things are. That's why things break. That's why things fall apart. That's why things just eventually break down to the point that they're not around anymore. It's just entropy, the eventual heat death of the universe. Everything in the universe works on this principle, except one thing, one thing. Everything in our universe tends towards the simpler. We start with complex, the things that we make, and in time they break down and become simpler. One thing breaks that. We're not quite sure why. Life, life itself, things that live. Over time, biological things become more complex, not less. We don't break down and become less. We become more complex. We build up and become more. And that's absolutely astonishing that there is life 
and it fights against entropy so hard. Kind of cool. On that note, I'm going to wake up this poor little guy. He's been running around here. I've been wondering who on earth was I going to show off this morning. Because my bin cages are nice, but they're big. And the little cages are little, but they're little. And I just thought, hey, you know, I'll get out little Charlie slash Harvey, because he's been running around in his cage, and I will show him off, because he is a sweetheart. He's an absolute sweetheart. Is your eye coming up, or are you just not? Oh, it is a little gummy. Come on, just be, open up your eyelid, or it's going to gum shut. There you go. Sort of. Sort of. I, well. Anyway, though. <laughs> I've got an anti-eye gummy spray stuff, so I'll just spray him in the eye. It's an anti-pink eye stuff. It's a veterinarian stuff. So really, it's not even a prescription thing, but you get it in pet stores for like farm animals if they get pink eye and stuff in their eyes. So you just squirt them in the eye and then it washes their eyes out. And it's not bad for them, so it's good. But he's a sweetheart. He's confused. He's wondering why the world keeps changing. You know, the, the surface is not just staying stable and he can't dig through it, but he's a good little guy. He's an absolute sweetheart. He has really calmed down. When I first got him, he was, I mean, he was gentle and sweet, but he really, you couldn't hold him for more than maybe a minute or two before he won it down. So here we go, little guy, thank you so much. Well, you're a good little guy. Now I've got him so I can hold him for several minutes. I can even take him around the house and he's fine with that now. He, want, he stays in my hand and he doesn't bite and he just sniffs and I set him on countertops and he's, he's very well behaved. He's learned quickly that I'm not gonna leave him alone. <laughs> I like to drag hamsters everywhere. Oh, yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. My goodness, after I made my game video, I started getting really sleepy, really tired. Oh my gosh, I was falling into a daze. I started doing a game video for, uh, using Grimm. You know, the Grimm's Fairy Tales, American McGee's Grimm. And so I played Grimm. Thing is, I woke up like, must have been around 5.30, 6 o'clock, something like that. I can't remember the exact time because I was in a daze most of the day yesterday. But I just woke up in my chair here and went, oh and didn't remember stopping playing. Oops, so I gotta go check those files still, see if that's even a something that I can keep or if I just fall asleep toward the end of it. Hard to say. But yesterday evening, I spent a lot of time just obsessively playing still more Creeper World 3 Arc Eternal. I am reaching a saturation point on that. I have been playing the what's known as the prospectors section of it, where you're grabbing these artifacts of Odin, which are just things scattered about the map that you have to collect. And it's reached a point where I am so good at defeating the creeper stuff, even with you know, it, where it'll send spores that go flying through the air and you have to destroy the spores. Now I'm just able to take a look at the map and go, huh, I can throw down a couple command nodules, toss down a network, just fill up a huge area, overbuild massively with the collectors, toss in a bunch of guns, cannons, around the outer edge of my network of stuff, toss in a few strafers, way back here at the end where it's got to build its way to it, put a couple of reactors, and then just sit back. And if I survive like the first two minutes, it's a foregone conclusion. Because if I don't get wiped out immediately, I've won. And it's just reached that stage where if I'm not wiped out immediately, I've, I've won. It's a foregone conclusion. I'm able to just, even watching the stuff come down and go, oh, I massively overbuilt. Well, let's just watch this stuff, see how it flows on this map for the next time. And then just able to quickly throw in some other stuff to pick up any mistakes and drive over and dominate the map. It's no challenge anymore. Even really, really tiny maps where I've discovered I have to squeeze myself so tight into a corner and just hold myself in small. Foregone conclusion, I've won. 
If I'm not wiped out in that first minute, 60 seconds, I've won. So it's, I'm pretty much at the point where I'm done playing that one. I'm still doing it out of momentum, but it's just about time for another game because on the prospect of collecting Odins, you'll have an entire star system and it's got like five or six, anywhere from two planets to nine planets. And you go from planet to planet wiping out the creeper and then you collect all the, the artifacts and you head on to the next one. I can do an entire star system with no failures in just a couple hours. And it's, it's not something that I'm proud of, but it's something that it's, it shows that if you just do something, you can get good at it no matter what. Now, I do have to keep doing that with other things, but whenever I play one game, that means there's another 10 or 100 or 200 games that I'm not playing. I have so many games now, I, I, I can't ever finish them. If I sat down and did one game a day, just played one game a day, yeah, that'd be like, well, just on Steam alone, like four years to go through them all. So I've got to make a decision and say, well, I own this game, but I'm going to just play it mildly or not at all because there are so many good things that I still have to play and finish like Divinity Original Sin, the first one, Divinity Original Sin 2, Wasteland, Wasteland 2, the, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. there's all sorts of that. Pillars of Eternity with the White March. It's like, oh my gosh, there's so many excellent games. And then I spend so much of my time playing stuff like Zombie Party, which is you just pick up guns and you the random ammo that you pick up as you kill the like hundreds of zombies. It's a low-res uh, indie pixel game. And you just kill massive hordes of zombies. And that's the game. You pick up ammo, you pick up new guns, and you kill the zombies, and you use the ammo and the guns to kill the next zombies and the next wave until you get the boss. And then if you take out the boss, you start the next cycle to the next boss. I play that game way too much too. It's, I should be playing the games that require thought and are really good, like Wasteland 2, like Pillars of Eternity. I bought some months back the uh, updated Torment, Planescape, Planescape Torment, I bought that. I've got the original Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2, the original Iceland Dale, Iceland Dale 2. I need to finish those. I've also bought the enhanced version. I did this years ago because I hate the enhanced versions. I like the originals, but I'm a completist. So I've, I've got those and I need to play those. System Shock and System Shock 2, I need to finish those. Oh my gosh. I start games and I get into them a little bit and then I get afraid of finishing them and then I stop playing them. I've done that my whole life too, where I've come really close to finishing a game. The closer I get to finishing a game, the less my desire to actually play it until eventually I'm like, oh, I just need to play this for like two more days and I can't force myself to play anymore. I'm 99.9% .9 done. All I have to do is a few more hours and I'm finished, but I cannot make myself do it. I stop playing that one and go on to the next one. I'm not quite sure why I do it that way, but I do, so thumbs up. Still though, I've got a bunch of stuff and I wanna get done. And I wanna get the, the consoles. I got consoles over there. Boy, I'm having difficulties making my brain work properly. My sincere apologies. I've got so many console games that I want to play and stream. I've got the an Elgato HD Pro or an HD 60. I can't remember which one it is, but I got the thing to stream from the consoles onward. I've got Game Show. I've got OBS. I got all sorts of stuff. I just need to not fall asleep so I can play these things and do these things. I have so many things I want to get done, and yet I keep falling asleep. 
Well, I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments on my community station, station, my community page. I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me comments on the community tab. I'm not reading the comments now. I'm going to read the comments afterward. I'm going to thumbs up everyone I read, answer as many as I can. Now, if I mispronounce your name while thanking you, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker. We're terrible at names. I do my best. I'm better than most, but I'm going to mispronounce most names, and I'm sorry about that. Now again, because I'm not reading the comments now, it doesn't matter if it is a good comment, a bad comment, or in a different comment, the fact is you left me a comment. Thank you very, very much. That is the important part. So we're gonna start with Zyfril. Thank you very, very much. Greatly appreciated. Annie's World, greatly appreciated. Thank you. Now you overuse the word appreciate. I can't find a different one. There's no good synonym that means appreciate. Yay. And Matavis Bulcher, thank you very, very much. Ganja salad, <laughs> I have the best kind of salad of all. Thank you very, very much. And Blessed Beats, thank you, greatly appreciated. Status Mod, thank you. Candace Watson, greatly appreciated, thank you very much. Jason Hallmark, thank you. Marco Boy, 123TV, thank you very, very much. Anthony Ornelas, greatly appreciated. And Zex, thank you. Sombra, thank you very, very much. Leo D, thank you. Greatly appreciated. Japanese rice picker. Well, how about that? Heck of a name there, huh? Devoid of skill. Well, I'm not sure. That's a heck of a name, but son of a gun. Thank you very, very much. The, uh, Linard, L-E-I-N-A-R-D, Reaper, with an O with the N. Thank you very, very much. And Bo Phelps, thank you very, very much. J.W., thank you. Greatly appreciated. And Science, A-S-M-R, thank you very much. Gert Burt, <laughs> Thank you, greatly appreciated. And Jasmine Catron, thank you, thumbs up. Let's talk nerds, thank you very, very much. Kira Lynam, thank you very much, greatly appreciated. And then Acid Bath 32, I think I went from three to four, I hope, otherwise I just screwed up. And then last but not least, Donovan Langford, thank you so very much, greatly appreciated. Again, you get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people, thank you very much. It is greatly appreciated. I'm clinically depressed. It's just not a good landscape behind these eyes. How about that? Well, if you could check out my links down below, that would be awesome. I've got like Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, Google+, and that's all of them, really. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful, awesome people, that would be very beautiful and awesome of you. I really need financial help. I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent next month. And I don't want to be homeless. If you could help, that would be awesome, please. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron to save my life, that would be awesome. But if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes. Deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest, so thank you very, very much. And if you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get for my existence. Definitely a thumbs up. If you could subscribe to the channel, that would be cool as well. I would appreciate that, but I do understand. My personality has rubbed people wrong my entire life, so if you don't like my videos or you do not want to subscribe, unfortunately, I understand. But if you are down with it, I'll do my best to keep you entertained from now until the literal end of at least my time. I just turned 55 last October. The average lifespan of American man is 74 years. Hopefully in the next 19 summers, I'll be able to make a ton of videos for y'all. Definitely a thumbs up. Wow, I wrapped this one up so fast. It's 18 minutes and 24 seconds. I've done this so early because I've, once again, I gotta get together and get ready for my therapist appointment. I have to leave here at 8.15 at the very latest. It takes 20 minutes to drive on the interstate from here to Olympia. It's not even an interstate, it's just a Washington State Highway, but it takes 20 minutes to drive from Shelton to Olympia. And then I've got to have that time from here to the highway and then from the highway to the place. So it's a good half hour. Thumbs up on that. Got to drive that far. It's a good thing. Well, I've got less than a minute left. So you know what? I am not going to call this one short. I like to put it at 20 minutes. No longer. Not a lot less unless I absolutely have to. So what the heck, I'll just pad this one by talking about the bus of death. That is right. Remember Falco, the guy who sang Rock Me Amadeus in the 1980s. He was crossing the street. The bus with his name on it got him, killed him. 
out there is a bus with your name on it. Your challenge, avoid that bus. You could be on the 15th floor having dinner in a restaurant and the next thing you know you hear a horn through the window. You look up and this bus comes spiraling through the air and through the window and crashes into your table. The bus is going to get you. So you take care. Have a great day. Remember your challenge. Don't let that bus kill you.